Have you ever wondered why some people seem to get rich easily, while others are destined for a life of financial struggle? Welcome. Today, we're going to discuss a fascinating concept, the paradox of wealth. It's a common misconception that wealth is about earning big money. But the truth is, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you keep and how effectively that money works for you. Consider this. Two individuals earning the same amount annually. One spends most of his income on lavish lifestyles, while the other saves and invests wisely. Over time, who do you think would be wealthier? The answer, as you might have guessed, is the second individual. This is because he understands the true essence of wealth. It's not about living a luxurious life, but about attaining financial independence. Financial independence is not a myth. It's a reality that can be achieved by anyone willing to learn and apply the right strategies. It's about having your money generate more money for you, even while you sleep. It's about your money working for you instead of you working for your money. This brings us to the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad a revolutionary guide that has transformed the lives of many around the world. Written by Robert Kiyosaki, this book provides invaluable lessons about money, wealth, and financial independence. It's not just a book, it's a financial literacy course wrapped in a cover. The wisdom encapsulated in this book is not taught in schools or colleges. It's not about accounting or economics, but about understanding money and making it work for you. It's about changing your perspective on money, from seeing it as a necessity to seeing it as a tool for creating wealth. So, are you ready to break free from the chains of financial struggle? Are you ready to embark on a journey towards financial independence? If yes, then let's dive in. Let's dive into the first lesson that can set you on the path to wealth. The rich don't work for money. Sounds counterintuitive, right? Well, it's not as paradoxical as it may seem at first glance. You see, the wealthy have a different perspective on money and work. They don't toil away at a job, trading hours for dollars. Instead, they let their money work for them. This shift in perspective requires a fundamental understanding of what money truly is. Money isn't just a means to buy things. It's a tool that can be used to create more wealth. The wealthy understand this and focus their efforts on investing rather than merely earning. Now you might be thinking, but I need to work to earn money to invest, right? Yes, but here's where the concept of passive income comes into play. Passive income is money that you earn without having to trade your time for it continuously. It could be from rental properties, dividends from stocks, royalties from a book you've written, or even a side business that doesn't require your constant involvement. Investing wisely and creating streams of passive income allow the rich to make money while they sleep. They're not shackled by the nine to five grind. Their time is their own and they can focus on things they are passionate about, things that might even bring in more wealth. But here's the catch. To successfully navigate this world of investing in passive income, you need a solid financial education. You need to understand how money works, how to manage risk and how to spot opportunities. This knowledge isn't taught in traditional schools, which is why many people are stuck in the rat race, working for money instead of letting money work for them. So it's not about working harder, but working smarter. It's about understanding money, investing wisely, and generating passive income. The rich don't work for money. They've mastered the art of making money work for them. It's a game, and once you know the rules, you can play to win. So it's not about working harder, but working smarter. Why do we need to teach financial literacy? Just as we learn to read and write, understanding the language of money is critical. From the moment we earn our first dollar, we're thrust into a world where our financial decisions can have far-reaching impacts. Yet many of us navigate through this complex landscape without a map, without the knowledge of financial literacy. Financial literacy is more than just being able to balance a checkbook. It's about understanding financial markets, recognizing the impact of economic factors on investments, and making informed decisions about saving, investing, and planning for the future. It's about understanding the difference between assets and liabilities, the importance of cash flow, and the power of compound interest. Many people believe that if they earn more money, their financial worries will disappear. 
but more money can often lead to more problems if not managed wisely. That's where financial literacy comes in. It equips individuals with the tools to manage money effectively to make it work for them rather than the other way around. It's what separates those who achieve financial independence from those who live paycheck to paycheck. Financial literacy can also level the playing field. It can provide opportunities for upward mobility, breaking the cycle of poverty. It can empower individuals to take control of their financial destinies, to build wealth, and to secure a more prosperous future. Teaching financial literacy is not just about imparting knowledge. It's about changing mindsets. It's about fostering a culture of financial responsibility, encouraging proactive financial behavior, and promoting long-term financial health. It's about equipping the next generation with the knowledge and skills to navigate the financial landscape confidently and successfully. Financial literacy is not a luxury, it's a necessity. It's a life skill that everyone needs, regardless of their age, income, or background. It's a stepping stone to financial independence, a shield against financial pitfalls, and a beacon guiding us towards a more secure and prosperous future. Financial literacy is the foundation of financial independence. Mind your own business. It's not just a phrase, it's a wealth building strategy. Now, don't misunderstand. This doesn't mean you should ignore the world around you or stop being a team player at work. Rather, this is about focusing on building and nurturing your own assets and investments instead of solely relying on a paycheck. Let's think about this for a second. When you're working a nine to five job, you're essentially working to enrich someone else's business, your labor, your time, your creativity. They're all fueling someone else's financial growth. But what about your own financial growth? Is it getting the same level of attention and energy? That's where the concept of minding your own business comes in. This is about creating your own wealth building engine, your own source of income. It's about entrepreneurship, about turning your passion, your skills, your ideas into a business that generates income for you. It's about creating multiple streams of income so that you're not reliant on just one paycheck. You see, when you mind your own business, you're in control. You get to decide where to invest your time and energy, what risks to take, what opportunities to pursue. You're not at the mercy of an employer who can lay you off at any time. You're not waiting for that annual raise to maybe increase your income a little. Instead, you're actively working on growing your own wealth. You're learning, experimenting, adapting. You're taking the reins of your financial future and steering it in the direction you want not in the direction someone else has decided for you. In the end, it's about financial independence, about having the freedom to make your own choices, to live life on your own terms. It's about not just surviving, but thriving. It's about creating a life of abundance, not scarcity. So start today. Start minding your own business. Start building your own wealth. Remember, your business is your wealth. Taxes and corporations, what's the connection? Let's dive into the fascinating history of taxes and explore how corporations have leveraged tax laws to their advantage. The concept of taxation dates back to the days of ancient Egypt, where pharaohs imposed taxes on cooking oil. Over the centuries, taxes evolved, reflecting the economic conditions of the time. In the Middle Ages, feudal lords demanded a portion of their serfs' harvest. Then, as trade expanded, tariffs and duties became prevalent. Fast forward to the 19th century, and we see the introduction of income tax, a concept that initially stirred controversy, but has now become a staple of modern economies. On the other hand, the story of corporations is relatively recent. Corporations, as we know them today, originated in the 17th century with the formation of entities like the East India Company. They provided a means for investors to pool resources and limit their liabilities thus encouraging investment in large-scale projects. But here's where it gets interesting. Over time, corporations have gained significant power, not just economically, but also politically. They've been able to influence tax laws often to their benefit. For instance, corporations can exploit loopholes to reduce their tax burdens, something not typically accessible to individuals. They can also reinvest profits tax-free into growing their businesses. So why does understanding this history matter? 
While knowing how corporations have navigated tax laws can provide insight into wealth management and growth. For instance, incorporating a business can offer tax advantages like deductions for business expenses. It can also provide a level of protection for personal assets. Moreover, understanding these tax strategies can guide investment decisions. Investors can seek out corporations that effectively manage their taxes, as this can lead to greater profitability and consequently, higher returns on investment. In essence, taxes and corporations are more than just dry economic concepts. They're pieces of a larger puzzle, a puzzle that when solved can unlock the secrets of wealth creation. So remember, taxes and corporations, when understood and used wisely, can be tools for wealth creation. The rich invent money. Sounds impossible, right? But it's not. At first glance, this may seem like a paradox. Money can't be invented, can it? It's printed by governments, traded for goods and services, saved, spent, but invented. That's where the rich differ from the rest. They understand that money isn't just a tangible entity. It's an idea, a tool, a concept that can be expanded and manipulated in countless ways. The rich don't wait for opportunities to come knocking at their door. They create them. They invent money by seeing potential where others see none. This is where financial intelligence comes into play. It's not just about understanding the numbers, but about being able to foresee trends, identify opportunities, and make informed decisions based on that knowledge. Think of it as a game of chess. The rich are not just playing with the pieces on the board, they're strategizing, anticipating their opponent's moves and creating opportunities for victory. They do this by using their creativity, their understanding of the financial landscape, and their willingness to take calculated risks. Consider real estate, for example. A property in a rundown neighborhood might seem like a poor investment to most, but a financially intelligent person might see potential. With some creative thinking and smart investment, that same property could be transformed into a profitable rental unit or a sellable asset. This is the essence of inventing money. It's about seeing beyond the surface, beyond the immediate, to the potential that lies underneath. It's about taking that potential and transforming it into reality, into wealth. It's about not just working for money, but making money work for you. So, the next time you find yourself thinking that there's no opportunity in sight, remember this. The rich don't wait for opportunities to come to them. They create them. They invent money. Inventing money is about seeing and seizing opportunities. Work to learn, don't work for money. A powerful mindset shift. A statement that might seem counterintuitive in a society where the primary motive to work is often to earn money. But let's delve a bit deeper. The idea here isn't to dismiss the importance of money. Rather, it's about shifting our perspective from short-term gains to long-term growth. It's about understanding that the skills we acquire, the knowledge we accumulate, and the experiences we gather are the real wealth. Think about it this way. Money is a resource that can be exhausted. But knowledge, that's an asset that multiplies the more you use it. It's an investment that pays dividends throughout your life. In the grand scheme of things, working solely for money is like running on a hamster wheel. You might be moving, but you're not really going anywhere. On the other hand, when you work to learn, every day is a step forward. Every challenge is an opportunity to grow. Every failure, a lesson learned. And over time, these lessons compound, giving you the skills and the wisdom to navigate the world of finance with finesse. Consider the most successful entrepreneurs and business moguls of our time. Did they amass their wealth merely by chasing money? No, they focused on learning, on acquiring skills, on understanding their industries inside out. They knew that the money would follow if they could offer something of real value to the world. And that's the crux of it all. When you work to learn, you're not just earning a paycheck, you're equipping yourself with the tools to create your own wealth, to become financially independent. You're laying the foundation for a future where you're not just surviving, but thriving. So don't just work for money, work for knowledge, work for skills, work for growth. Remember, in the world of financial independence, the more you learn, the more you earn. Learning is earning in the world of financial independence overcoming obstacles, getting started, and the power of giving, the final lessons. 
Life is never a smooth journey. It's a winding road filled with detours and roadblocks, each one a challenge to overcome. In the pursuit of financial independence, these challenges often take the form of fear and procrastination. These two formidable foes can paralyze us, keeping us stuck in the status quo, unable to move forward. But it's important to remember that fear and procrastination are not the enemy. They are merely indicators of change and growth, signaling that we are on the cusp of stepping outside our comfort zone and into uncharted territory. Overcoming fear requires courage. It requires acknowledging the fear, understanding its roots, and then facing it head on. It's about taking that first step, no matter how small, towards your financial goals. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. Surround yourself with mentors and like-minded individuals, those who have walked the path before you and can guide you along the way. Procrastination, on the other hand, is often a symptom of overwhelm. When the path to financial independence seems too complex or daunting, we tend to put things off, telling ourselves we'll start tomorrow, next week, or next year. But the truth is, there will never be a perfect time to start. The perfect time is always now. So break down your financial goals into smaller, manageable steps. Celebrate each achievement, no matter how small. And before you know it, you'll be well on your way to financial freedom. Now, let's talk about the power of giving. Yes, the pursuit of wealth is important. It provides security, freedom, and the ability to live life on our own terms. But true wealth is not just about accumulating assets. It's about using those assets to make a positive impact in the world. It's about giving back, sharing our knowledge, our resources, and our time with those who need it most. The power of giving is twofold. On one hand, it helps to create a more equitable and just society, a world where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. On the other hand, it brings a sense of fulfillment and purpose that money alone cannot buy. It reminds us that we are part of something bigger than ourselves, a global community interconnected in ways we often forget. So as you embark on your journey to financial independence, remember to give back. Find a cause that resonates with you, a cause that you are passionate about, and dedicate a portion of your wealth to it. Not only will it bring you joy and fulfillment, but it will also inspire others to do the same, creating a ripple effect of positive change. In conclusion, overcoming obstacles, getting started, and the power of giving are integral parts of the journey to financial independence. They are the stepping stones that pave the way, the lessons that guide us, and the values that keep us grounded. So embrace your fears, take the first step, and remember to give back. After all, the journey to wealth is not just about the destination, but about the journey itself and the impact we make along the way. These final lessons tie everything together and set you on the path to financial independence. Wealth and financial independence, they are within your reach. This isn't just a motivational statement, it's a fact. The journey to financial prosperity is one of learning, creativity, and most importantly, action. But what does that look like in practical terms? Let's summarize the key lessons we've explored today. First and foremost, financial education is essential. Understanding money, how it works, and how it can work for you is a fundamental step. We've debunked the myth that the rich simply work for money. Instead, they make money work for them, using smart investments and leveraging the power of corporations. Speaking of corporations, understanding the history of taxes and the influence of corporations is vital. It's not just about earning money, but also about preserving and growing it efficiently. The wealthy aren't just money makers, they're inventors, creating opportunities and finding innovative ways to multiply their wealth. Then, there's the entrepreneurial spirit. Minding your own business isn't about being selfish. It's about creating and nurturing something you own, something that generates income even when you're not working. It's about building assets, not liabilities. And let's not forget the importance of learning. Working to learn, rather than working for money, is a mindset shift that can propel you forward. Each job, each role, each experience is a stepping stone, providing valuable lessons that can be applied to your wealth building journey. Lastly, but certainly not least, is the power of giving back. Wealth isn't just about accumulation, it's about contribution. The wealthy understand the importance of giving back, of sharing their knowledge, time, and resources. 
It's a cycle. The more you give, the more you receive. Wealth and financial independence are not destinations, but journeys. They require patience, perseverance, and a willingness to step outside your comfort zone. Remember, the journey to wealth starts with a single step. Take that step today.